welcome back to the show. We have something very exciting for you today. Right here is a 10 pound porterhouse, one piece. We're gonna show you how to get this done. Stick around, don't go anywhere. What you're gonna need for this is kosher salt. That's it, that's the only thing we're gonna need. So we're gonna take this big piece of meat right here. Let's get this cutting board out of the way. You're gonna need a vessel like this, something deep, and just a second, line it for kosher salt. On the floor, you're gonna need a whole lot of this too. So we're making basically like a salt bed for this. I know this looks like a lot of salt, but it is a big piece of meat. All right. Once we do that, fat side down into this piece of meat, just like that. And come on the top. This is a coarse kosher salt. You can see how big the grains are in there. Okay. Get it nice and covered, coat it. And then once you do that, you gotta turn your, your meat to the side. Get it in there like that. Get that salt on there. And then get it on this side. This is a salt brine. and it's gonna marinate overnight in this. So once we get that in there, we're gonna go on the bone, get back, and just get all the sides nice and coated. Just like that. All the sides nice and coated. And that's what your salt, your steak should look like. Just like a nice crusted piece of meat. All right, so, after we do this, it's gonna sit on the bone side in that salt, just like that. We're gonna wrap this piece of meat with plastic wrap into the fridge it goes. That's gonna go for about 24 hours. And that's it. We'll see you right back here. Don't go anywhere. All right, it's day two, and I'm just gonna show you what this meat looks like. It's been marinating all night long in the salt. So if you could see down in there, I'll lift this up, you see how wet that is? So all this salt has sat on the steak and it's, it's all wet and it has changed the, the texture of the steak. I could feel it more stiffer. It's almost like going into a dry age stage because all of that salt sucked out that moisture. And just like dry age steaks, when you dry age a steak, you wanna suck out that moisture and this is what happens when you get all that moisture out of here. So we're gonna cook this thing with all the salt on. I know it looks like a lot. It's gonna burn off, it's gonna sweat off. And a lot of the salt's just gonna just burn up, come out of there. And when this piece of meat starts to sweat, see all that salt? When this piece of meat starts to sweat, it's all that salt's just gonna get up out of there anyway. And the ends might be a little salty, but by the time we cut and slice into this, all that salt just gonna just be perfect for a piece of meat this size. So with no further ado, onto the grill we go. All right, so this is what we're rolling with today. This is Coyote's 36 inch charcoal grill. Let's take you for a tour of the inside. This is Coyote's 36 inch charcoal grill, stainless steel. Nice thing about this, it's got holders on each side, so nice trays on each side. The hood itself, if you lift it, it folds right back into the cooker, so you never have to worry about it hitting anything if you're in tight areas. Beautiful grates on here, they're stainless steel. Let's just take a look at these, and they're solid too. I mean, these things have gotta be weighing about 12 pounds each. Now, nice thing about this grill, you can actually move the fire up with this handle to move the fire up to your food. So you can bring the fire to your food or you can bring the fire away from your food. Very simple, basic design. 
This is a drawer and it also acts as an air vent. So the air goes in, comes out, vents out to the top of the grill. And here's the tray. So you can always add fuel to your cooker and you never have to worry about taking the grates out. It's a beautiful feature for a charcoal grill. And it's got some nice storage space down at the bottom. It's got a little real estate under here. You can put a couple of uh, pots, pans, whatever you have, charcoal, right up underneath here, and they close nice and soft. They're spring assisted. And that's it. That completes our grill. We're gonna get this thing fired up. I'm gonna show you my wood position, which we're using today to cook this, uh, this large piece of meat. And uh, let's get it on. And that's barbecue, Southern style. So this is my wood setup. First thing I'm gonna do is open my vents up. They're what light up in the bottom. This is my fire starter here in the middle, just like if you've seen a lot of the other grill setups I do. So fire starter, charcoal for the heat, and then we have pecan wood right now just on the outside. So as this starts to burn up and bring the heat, this is gonna bring the smoke and it's gonna be a very beautiful thing. And that's it, very simple, basic. Uh, this grill is not gonna hold a lot of charcoal, so I'm probably gonna have to fill it up as we go along, uh, just because it's not designed to hold, it's just not a solid, solid uh, cooker. So I'm not gonna abuse my cooker, and I'll just add more coal as we go along, and just keep my fire small. That's it, so let's get it lit up, and let's barbecue. Southern stuff. All right, our fire's lit. We're gonna get this to run for about 10 minutes. We're gonna get those coals a little on the white side. Now those are natural charcoal right there and they got no additives in there. So even if they do have some black in there a little bit, but you don't want this fire completely white and raging. So we're gonna get this fire lit. We're gonna stabilize our grill. And then once we stabilize the grill, we're gonna go put the meat on. Stick around, don't go anywhere. We're ready to put this on. I actually put some wood in here just to get this fire going crazy. There's wood chunks in here or wood, uh, yeah, wood chunks in here. If you look, the coals actually aren't white. The heat is coming from those wood chunks. So I just do a bunch of small pieces on top just so I could get this roast on. So here's our, our piece of meat right here. I'm gonna put it on fat side down, right out of this little container. And here we go. This is what we want. We're just gonna let it char up on all that nice fat. We're gonna char up all the sides on here. And that's what you're looking for. And don't worry, you won't burn this thing up. Now this piece of meat's so heavy, I got these, they're really not heat resistant gloves for fire. They're, they are plastic, so be careful with this. I'm just using them, but they will burn on you. So what I'm gonna do is kinda just smack that roast around. If I use a tong, I can't get a ton around that thing, but I could use my hands and just by a couple of seconds of having my hands in the fire is not gonna burn these gloves up. They're wet anyway, so I'm not gonna harm anything. All right, so we're gonna turn it. Here we go, just be careful here. See that? I don't really like that, so we're going back down here. Now I also have, as you're watching this, I also have my coals all the way cranked up to the meat. If I move this down and crank it down, it's gonna give me a, too much of a flame up. The flames would be way high, and you don't want that. You want that meat to be as close to those coals as possible, just to avoid that flame up. So you want the flame up, but you don't want a crazy flame up.
and she's looking good. Firing away there. All right, so we're gonna let it just go there. It almost looks like you're burning it, but you're not. Just gonna flame up, flame on. And as it's doing that, it's coming up through the sides. And it's just giving this, this is what you would do to a porterhouse. It's just a bigger, you know, just a bigger porterhouse. But you would do the same thing to a thick porterhouse if you were cooking it this way. So I'm just letting it sit here and just burn up. Right, we're looking pretty good. I'm gonna roll this out of the fire. Put it on its backbone. Let it burn up there for a while. And as that's burning up over there, we're going to get it onto its side. Wait for me. And now let's do that side. So pretty much you're just charring up all the, the sides. This where you develop that nice crust. And like I said, this is why you don't have to worry about all that salt. Because all that salt, it's gonna get out of there. So you don't have to worry about all that. Believe me. Does that look beautiful? Is she just charring up? I'm not too happy with this side yet, but we're gonna flip it back over and get that outside charred up. All right, so we're gonna come to this side and then back on the bone. Back on this side she goes. And then we're gonna finish her off on the bone. Now I'm not doing the felly side because this is the felly side over here, the felly being young. I don't want to dry that out. So you, know, you notice I want from the bone to the sides to the top where the fat is. And I'm not doing the felly side because I don't want to burn that. All right, here we go. Out of the fire. Just like that, indirect on that side. That's what you're looking for right there. Let's and let's crank this down because we don't need flames that high. Crank this down like that. We're gonna make sure that's not hot and we're gonna close her up. Adjust her vents. move this a little forward because my screen's back there and I got a couple of flames flying out of the back of this. And that's that. Now you can see that temperature gauge she went right up to about 600 degrees because that fire was cranking. I shut down all the vents. I'm going to stabilize this fire. And that's that. I want this thing I want this thing on roast. This thing is gonna cook at about 250 degrees. I normally cook hot and fast, but when it comes to like a porterhouse roast like this, I'm gonna cook it nice and easy. You're cooking the same way basically as you're cooking a prime rib. It's the same type of style. No difference. All right, I'm gonna stabilize this and uh, let that fire calm down 
and we'll see you back here. Stick around. Don't go anywhere. Okay, our roast has been on here now about 10 minutes. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna put this in a pan. You see that beautiful roast right there? And the reason why I'm putting this in a pan is so all those drippings, if you could see down in there, there's drippings and it's dripping down into there. We don't wanna waste those drippings. So right here I have butter, I have rosemary, and I'm gonna put this roast right into the center of that. Now the nice thing is the butter is gonna melt that in there, the rosemary is gonna melt that in there, and then we're gonna baste that piece of meat with the butter and the rosemary. So that's that, as she's cooking, she's gonna cook, and it's gonna make a nice uh, sauce for me, and that's what I'm actually gonna use to baste this with. So that butter was frozen, I had it in the freezer. I'm probably gonna add a couple of more coals to here because our fire's getting a little low, and uh, that butter will melt that in there, and then I'll start basting this piece of meat in probably about another hour. I'll use all the juices and the drippings from this piece of meat, plus the butter, plus the rosemary, and this thing is gonna be fantastic. Stick around, don't go anywhere. We'll be back. Okay, so we're about 45 minutes in with this roast, and like all of our other uh, shows, we're gonna tell you what we're gonna do. So, we need to baste this. Now, I set this in that pan, I'm gonna dump a little bit of red wine in there. And that red wine is gonna have the rosemary, the butter, the drippings from that nice piece of meat, and it's gonna make a beautiful sauce, and we're just gonna baste that. We're gonna let it roll, we're gonna check our temperatures. Um, I wanna pull this at about 130. Uh, a regular prime rib should be pulled about 120, but I really don't like my meat mowing like that. But we're gonna pull it somewhere around 125, 130. I'll just see how I feel when it uh, comes to that. And that's it. So, stick around, don't go anywhere. All right, we're about 45 minutes in. Let's take a look and see what we got going on. Look at that. So, we got plenty of butter in here. I'm just gonna move this roast off to the side. Plenty of rosemary, plenty of drippings. Now what we're gonna do is come in just with a little white wine. I'm sorry, red wine. This is red wine. I always like to use red wine with red meats. Okay, Let's give that little stir around there. And then baste. Right in the pan. Now that nice bone works as almost like a roasting uh, pan. It's keeping all, of, it's sitting on the bone and it's keeping the meat elevated in the air so it's not sitting, because it's sitting on the bone, it's not sitting in a spot where it's gonna make one part of this roast well done. There you go, just like that. That's what we're looking for. And that rosemary is just getting down in there. See that nice piece of rosemary? Just stick it. Nice piece of rosemary there. We'll just put it there. And just tilt the pan over and just come down with these beautiful drippings. And afterwards, when you cut into this, you'll have some nice drippings. You can put this on the stove and you could simmer it down and turn it into a nice sauce. Add some heat to it, reduce it, reduce the sauce, and it's good. There you go. Get it nice and baste it. That nice water rosemary. Tilt the pan. Get it in there. Look at that. All right. I'm gonna get this closed up and stabilized. We're gonna come back in about 40 minutes. We're gonna take its temperature, and we're gonna see when it's time to pull. Stick around, don't go anywhere. Okay, so our roast has been on here. It's at, I just probed it. Now I probed this at 
110 degrees. So she still has a little bit more ways to go. I'm gonna baste it one more time before I pull it. And that's gonna be about it. Now you can see all that. If you could look at that sauce, that nice butter and wine sauce. It's all just mixed in because the rosemary's cooked down, our drippings are in there, and now it's a uh, it's a beautiful sauce that we have here. And you can see that's the felly side. I didn't darken that side as we were roasting this, as we had it over the fire, and I said I didn't want to darken that side because I wanted my felly not to dry out. And look at that, it looks perfect. So, let me baste this a little bit more. Our fire is going nice. And I added some more wood chunks in as we went along the way. And that's that. We're gonna pull this just a little bit. As soon as I hit about 125, I'm pulling. And call it a day. All right, look at that. She's looking right. Perfect. Okay. I'm gonna close this down. I'm gonna stabilize this fire a little bit more. I threw a couple of wood chunks on there just to hit it with an after smoke effect. And we're good to go. We'll see you soon. Stick around. Don't go anywhere. All right, and we're here. We're at the chopping block, and this is what everybody I'm sure has been waiting for. So with no further ado, let's get into this hunk of meat. Just want you to get a look at that. We're gonna turn it around. And I'm actually gonna just pick it up for you guys. It's really heavy. Look at that. The thing's a mammoth. All right, so let's get this off to the side. Let's get this on the cutting board. And let's show you guys how to slice into this. I know what, you're probably wondering how to, how do you cut into a piece of meat this size? I'm gonna show you right now. So just like a small T-bone, you would follow the bone. We're gonna follow the bone around. We're gonna go in this way, we're gonna come back this way, and we're just gonna cut that section of the meat out. And then as we do this one, we're gonna cut it out the same way. So let's get it on. We're gonna start with our T-bone side first. So I'm gonna cut it this way. Just follow the bone down. Now, it's kind of best if you work with it this way, because then you can go all the way down. We're gonna just cut that right out. And that's that. So we got that cut out, and I want you to see that. Look at that. Right away from the ball. Now that we did that, we're gonna turn it this way, and we're gonna start just to slice over this way. Now I'm not gonna cut the whole roast up, just because I'm gonna be eating a little bit, but I just want you to get a good feel of how this looks. Now I pulled this roast at 125 degrees and that's how I like mine now you would just keep cutting in this section just like that and let's give this a nice pit master 
paste. Excellent. That fat is almost just like butter. Now, I saved this nice buttery sauce to go on top. And that's what you would do. You would just put that right there. Just like that. Mm. That's excellent. Salty, smoky. Now let's get into our Philly side. We're just gonna cut. Right down. My dogs are salivating for this bone. Now, I'm gonna show you something. I like my Philly rarer than I like the New York strip part of this because this side will be a New York strip and this side's the Philly. You put them together, you have the T-bone. Now look at that. Let's just cut that out of here. And that's our bone, which there's still meat left on here. And my doggies are gonna gnaw through all this. They're gonna love that. So let's put that bone off to the side and let's take a look at our Philly. That is beautiful. Gonna come down. Just cut into our filly. Look at that. And there it is. Now let's give that a try. This is how I like my meat. If you look at that filly side there, see that? It's a lot less done than the New York side, New York strip side. And that's why I did that. I didn't put over, I cooked this meat. I have to eat this. I put up this video, but basically I cooked this piece of meat for myself. So it's gotta come out perfect. <laughs> Just for me and my family. You get one shot with it, you can't put it back on. And let's go with a little bit of butter sauce on there. Let's give that a try. Wow. Phenomenal. All right, we're gonna get this plated up. We're gonna meet you guys right back here. Stick around. Don't go anywhere. All right, we're here. And if you like this video and many, many, many more to come, hit that like button, please subscribe. And don't forget to hit that little bell so you get videos like this first. And thank you for joining us. I hope you love this video. And gotta get that pitmaster taste here.